heard about the fact that there's a ghostly vision of God among the pastors and shepherds who are fully immersed in God and have that deep union with the Word of the Lord. Uh, I have imagination that that's here from time to time, and it's very similar to God on this planet and what we describe as the earth. So I've been looking for alternatives to this for a very long time. Uh, the, the primary or the, the main thesis was a presentation that uh, Robert Schweitz Palmer, a bishop of course, had given in Montreal at our Ontario Association of Presidents uh, church uh, uh, conference. Uh, it was that church presentation that I started to see suddenly the key from the key themes of technology, which have always been in my mind, you know, technology that existed prior to the gospel and tried to change that world. And uh, it was so, it was it was that lecture that kind of led me to follow these things. Since then, I have attended uh, two workshops on Blake Crawwell, and this essentially is my third one. And this is the construction of uh, my wife and I. In Ottawa, uh, Ontario. What we're looking at in Ottawa was uh, getting uh, a permit for a natural building. Uh, natural buildings don't tend to be part of the building code, so you have to go through a specific process in order to obtain that building permit. Uh, we went through an alternative uh, pollution process, and I had an envelope engineer along with my documentation to uh, assist us with, I guess, coming up with a scientific solution to probe more the wall system itself and why it works not only in our climate, but primarily without the vapor pressure. So in the wall system, we might, we can discuss that very quickly. The wall system, because it's an urban site, we have a series of different wall panels that we are prefabbing off-site. Uh, to build uh, construction like this uh, within a small urban site is very difficult to do because we don't have the space for it. Uh, in this scenario, we have two, three and a half by, or, three, or two by four wall systems. And uh, on one side, we need to create formwork, which will be a lap that will receive plaster on the interior and the exterior side. What kind of lap is that? It'll be a, a, a one by three lap. Just a, uh, no, sorry, a wood lap. A wood lap, a one by three wood lap. And the wood lap we're using is, uh, you can go a little thinner, but we went a little more heavier for the lap, largely for the moving of these panels to make sure that our light soft clay won't fall out in any direction. On the inside of both of our panels, which will become a bit of a sandwich, we have what is known as Roxo rigid insulation. This board acts as not only formwork that holds the light soft clay in place when it's moved into place, but it will also act as uh, a continuous insulation and provide us with an R12 to an R16 within the cavities of our wall. The so full per panel. Per panel, yeah. So each 12 inch wall will have, will consist of three and a half inches of light straw clay on the inside, uh, three and a half inches of rock soap, and three and a half inches of light straw clay. And uh, on the interior face, we are plastering that with clay plaster, and on the exterior, we're using a lime plaster. So it's a two by two by two by two. Yeah, so we have two inches of rock soil on one panel. The exterior panel will have one and a half inches of uh, rock soil. And when the two panels come up beside each other, the rock soil will be sandwiched between the two panels. And why rock soil? Rock soil is as natural of a material that we could find that would act as two purposes, an insulator as well as a uh, formwork. Because it comes in rigid and not fast, well, it comes in bad as well, but most other natural insulation only comes in fast or blown in. 
because this becomes rigid, you get out of conform this way to work. This is puckered board, uh, 80. Puckered board is 80. And it's a semi-rigid uh, rock sole insulation. Rock sole insulation is made from spun rock. So it's a little bit of a labor intensive process to repair any of these machining processes to do. But it is completely breathable. It molds the ink and fire the ink and it will allow any moisture that gets into this wall system to easily pass through the muffle and come out the other side of the wall. No. So in the building code you are all you always need an air barrier and a vapor barrier on a wall. Your air barrier is often on the exterior side and your vapor barrier is often on the interior side of the wall. Now a vapor or on the warm side of your wall. The largest problem with vapor barriers in climates like Ottawa or you know in most parts of Canada is the fact that during the summer months it is often cooler inside than it is outside. And if that's not monitored, you could potentially have risk of condensation inside that wall system. And there's real, no real fix for that type of vapor barrier. As well, vapor barriers, exactly. And vapor barriers really are, you know, largely plastic-based or a paint-based uh, supply. And uh, so we wanted to stay away from that and move to a more natural way of, of working. So the light shock plate, if a vapor barrier were to be intruded on, there would be a lot of moisture that would accumulate over time, which could potentially rot the form of the submarine system. And, but because it is breathable and allowed to breathe, that way it will always maintain some level of dryness. Uh, so the mixture of straw and clay. Oh, okay. Between between the components of uh, as Russ said, it's all in a natural way. And straw bales are often used in uh, areas like Ontario. And honestly, there's more approvals for straw bales than there are for light straw clay, largely because of its unique properties. Now the the straw bale. The reason I've always just steered away from it is that the straw itself can actually collect moisture, and that moisture can lead to mold within these wall systems. By coating the straw with clay the way they did a thousand plus years ago, the clay acts as a buffer to the straw to suck and control its moisture development and protect that straw so that the straw never gets you know never gets cold enough water. well as cob walls in places like Windsor. These wall systems are essentially the same that we are building here by the use of a clay and a fiber. The fiber being here, straw, but you could use almost any fiber to uh, insulate that wall. It could be wood chips or whatever is local to your facility. It all works the same way. But the clay is that sealing problem. It, it has that ability to, it likes water, and it thrives on it. So by having a little bit of moisture, the clay protects that surface. Now the clay also acts as a mat, and by having a mat added to your insulation, you appear to have, as you call this, a fourth wall or a super wall. And you have now a wall that can, when the sun comes on it, it can collect the heat, pass the solar heat, and then radiate that later on. So, you know, let's say on a monolithic wall, even the sun shining on a wall system can bring in and store heat, which then can transfer and help heat the house during the winter months. During the summer months, it takes a lot of the coolness, one, from the mat itself, which is very humidity, but it also brings in a lot of coolness and natural shelter and allows the whole interior to be uh, just naturally cool. So you wouldn't just 
required. Well, let's call prevention late change. Natural then would be required. Clay plaster that we'll be putting on the interior of our wall, they naturally control humidity. So if you put a half inch of clay plaster on the interior side of our walk-in, per se, uh, every time we had a shower, we would never have a clean dry humidity. So it naturally controls that humidity and then moving into the uh, environment of our walk-in facility. The clay also acts Oh, yes, there's no static as well inside uh, a, a system like this. There would be, uh, in, in a lot of forced air systems, you get a lot of static electricity from the actual product you have inside. The clay plaster helps to reduce any amount of that. And by using something like uh, a masonry heater and by using radiant floors, you tend to keep your house in a very comfortable way by heating masses. And those masses will also radiate into our walls, which are also strong walls. And by putting rock soil in between our wall systems, that, that protects the amount of solar UV, solar heat, or heat from you know, your radiant sources in the wall, prevent it from leaving the wall system itself. Keeps it in check. The air barriers, uh, there's a multiple systems that become air barriers. The most common one in these wall systems will be our lime plaster on the exterior and our clay plaster on the interior wall. Now, plasters work very well in air barriers because they are convenient. They don't require the taking of stone or the overlap. Doors and windows will be sealed using proper, uh, uh, just, uh, we'll probably be using like uh, sheet wool insulation around the barrier. And uh, I haven't discussed too much with Paula as to whether we will caution around where we have flashing around the perimeter. I am looking at using a breathable flashing system. I haven't actually uh, worked with it before, but uh, I'm quite intrigued sense that it allows any moisture to evaporate if it gets trapped underneath the tent. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking. And then I have to look at what type of caulking, if we go that route, or if there is more natural Right now, for building permits, we do have uh, HRV system in our design. Um, we'll see between now and a year from now whether we actually integrate that into the system. Our mechanical engineer is leaning on pretty heavy in two areas, largely because of our winter climate. Uh, I'm, again, not that keen on selling. So I've been trying to, you know, find I know there are ductless systems, 
but a Docker system would cost about 10 times more than a Docker system because you would have to install it almost in every room. So, yeah, yeah. So a Unix is a bit good for it. That's the platform that we have. But uh, we need Unix operations as well for that. But, you know, it's about between 2,000 and 2,500 no, two steps. So we are building inside of Atom. Yeah. So you'll have a series of uh, dormers that allow for headspace within that area. Yes, yes, it can be very exciting. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to build light software building in the Ontario and Quebec area for a very long time to come. Yes, we do. We, we will have to at some point. And maybe our, our house, uh, I mean, the reason we're building it is to become a little bit more. Thank you.